So now in this video, we're going to look at using an op amp. This is a basic schematic symbol for an op amp. We're going to use a 741 op amp as a voltage follower or unity gain amplifier. So to begin with, let's talk about the basic premise of it. It may seem a little bit confusing, but when you wire up the op amp this way as a unity gain amplifier, or you could call it a voltage follower, you're taking a voltage coming in, and then the op amp you do have to power the op amp but they don't always show that on schematics but uh, in any case you take the uh, voltage coming in and so the op amp looks at the non-inverting input voltage and the inverting input voltage and it changes the output based on their voltage differences and so it wants to be more like the non-inverting input and so when you feed that voltage back if there's a difference it changes its voltage and basically what it does since we're feeding it to the inverting input is if the output is lower than the non inverting input voltage it pushes the output voltage up if it's higher it pushes the output voltage down so it's basically always squeezing the voltage to whatever the non inverting input voltage is but you need that negative feedback because all it can look at are the two voltages there and all it can do is adjust the voltage coming out right there so now you may be wondering why even bother doing this we're actually going to look at that we're going to power these LEDs directly from a 100,000 ohm resistor we'll come up with our problems but uh, the, the thing is the uh, voltage coming in voltage coming out but it doesn't need any current so Demanding current from this trim pot throws off its voltage really easily. The input of the op amp does not need any current, so it holds the voltage very easily. The current that comes out of the output or into the output, however you want to look at it, since we're using alternating current here, that comes from the rails right there. And, uh, and then it ends up over to this integrated circuit, which goes also to the rail there. So it takes and gets whatever current it needs to hold the voltage at that output the best that it can. So now we come to a circuit that does a bad job of taking the voltage from a trim pot and powering a load with it. So I have a couple resistors here. They are at the uh, rails right there. So a voltage divider. And so we're going to take 18 volts across the two resistors and then call the halfway point zero volts which will give us nine volts more positive one way nine volts more negative the other way and so I'm using an integrated circuit up here for the uh, other circuitry it basically does the same thing but it does a better job and so I only need a one kilo ohm resistor to protect the LEDs whereas we have a couple three kilo ohm resistors right there but uh, that's topics for other videos for other days now we have a couple of LEDs one in one direction the other in the other direction and that's uh, pretty straightforward shortly the cathode is indicated by this dash here so I didn't write the colors there but I want this LED to light up when our signal is more negative than zero right there so I'm gonna put the long lead the anode where the resistors are and the short lead the cathode I'm gonna go up one row right there now the red LED I'm gonna do the opposite so this would be the green LED the uh, red LED I want to light up when our trim pot here is more positive so long lead the anodes are gonna go up one row which will connect to the trim pot later short lead the cathodes coming down here where the uh, anode of that LED and the two resistors that form our zero volt reference point right there and so for now that's a pretty straightforward we'll attach the trim pot coming up this output will just go to uh, I pulled it off of the op amp now so the op amps gonna do its own thing but uh, we'll connect it there coming up actually I need to go to the trim pot in a little bit so the output of the trim pot is over there it's about halfway so neither LED is lit up but before we do that let's grab the uh, multimeter and we'll see that it's really easy to get a voltage we want with the trim pot right now and so 
we can look at the rail voltage. I have my power supply set to 18 volts, which we have at the uh, rails right there. This rail and that rail right there. I have jumpers going across there. Now, as far as the trim pod is concerned, in relationship to our zero volt reference point, so we'll go right there, it's uh, not enough voltage to uh, light an LED even. But we can adjust that. It's a little more negative right now. I can grab the uh, screwdriver. I can turn it so it's pointed almost halfway, but a little more negative. Now I can go a fair amount more positive and uh, we'll see that uh, right there we have about 5.6 volts and so now we're going to attach it to the load you can see the LED is not very bright not terribly surprising though it's one or 3000 ohm resistors right there but hardly any uh, current is going through there and now when we look at the voltage you can see it's way off because the load this is a 100,000 ohm resistor all we have are 3 kilo ohm resistors there and 1.7 uh, volts or so being blocked in that range and that's actually the voltage you can see right there the voltage that's being blocked by the LED there's just barely enough current to uh, hold it at that voltage so the voltage got thrown way off so we can easily adjust to whatever we want between the uh, rails the voltage we want but the load demands more current than the uh, trim pot can provide so it throws that voltage way off we'll see the green LED lit up and uh, it's brighter it's just a naturally brighter component but uh, there you can see we're in the negative voltages and it's higher because it blocks more uh, voltage but uh, again it is thrown way off so that's the problem now what we can do is uh, I wrote a little note here instead of using the two resistors right there making a voltage divider as our virtual ground we can use our integrated circuit as a virtual ground so we don't have to do it that way but we saw the main takeaway is that there we go that the voltage is thrown off there you can see the LED is really dim this is just a one kilo ohm resistor because we do have a really good uh, virtual ground right here but uh, we'll go there and since it's already wired we'll look at the voltage now and can't really see that meter too well so we'll look at the uh, voltage in relationship to ground there about negative uh, 2.49 and uh, once we cut the load off there then we'll see it's a lot more negative so about uh, negative 5.9 so that's with no load the load still threw it off which we do not want we want the trim pot to hold its voltage and then power that same voltage to the load and so now that brings us to our op amp right there so I'm using the 741 op amp we split the rail as I mentioned before this integrated circuit the 2426 TLE 2426 takes the uh, rail uh, voltage and splits it gives us a zero volt reference point does a really nice job so as far as the LEDs are concerned if the output could go to the rail it doesn't it falls short but we have a potential of 9 volts positive or 9 volts negative in relationship to zero so a 1 kilo ohm resistor will work just fine protecting the LED from uh, 9 volts so pretty straightforward we have uh, the LEDs there again one in one direction long lead the anode towards the output and then this one the short lead the cathode is towards the output well the other pin is the other way and we'll use this resistor so there you go that's really our step-by-step -step build the input is floating right now and all we have to do again is take the uh, trim pot over there and so I'm using a 100,000 ohm resistor the results we're getting from this video are a lot less uh, dramatic with a 10 kilo ohm resistor 10 kilo ohm resistor can power the LEDs directly a lot better than a 100 kilo ohm but there we go we have the uh, trim pot there set more negative so it's not surprising that the green LED stayed lit the way it was now we're gonna turn this way and now the red LED lights up as we can see there but again the main takeaway is the voltages that are involved I have my uh, 
multimeter right here and we will look at the uh, input and output voltages first let's take the input out of the equation just the output of the trim pot so that's going to be in relationship to our virtual ground up here there you can see we got 4.4 uh, 4 volts so this is just floating right now it's doing its own thing we will attach the uh, trim pot to the non-inverting input there and uh, I forgot what voltage we saw but it should be the same there 4.4 and I'm pretty sure that's what it was and also that is our output voltage right there 4.29 right there so it dropped a little bit for uh, for some reason right there but in any case it, it's close that's the main takeaway now we'll go more negative so we got the green LED lit up and to go a little quicker we'll take our voltage measurement there so negative 5.464 and that'll probably be the same when we disconnect the trim pot from the input so the inputs just looking at that voltage right there and uh, hopefully it is outputting the same look like it was a, a spec different but uh, there we can see 5.472 so I think that was just a spec off no that one was spot on that time okay but uh, in any case also the uh, output here cannot go to the rail that is uh, one thing with this particular op amp can't go to either rail some op amps go to one rail and or the other and uh, so in any case you gotta pay attention to the particulars of your op amp so here we'll see we have negative 9 volts right there but the output can't go that far it's gonna stop uh, looks like about 3 or about 2 volts a little more than 2 volts away from the negative rail and then uh, we'll go all the way to the uh, positive rail there and again the output doesn't go all the way to either one of the rails with this op amp so we got 9 volts there but at the output it falls short so it'll keep trailing along until about 8 volts positive and then it kind of stops so you can keep raising the trim pot there and uh, so that's basic op amp output stuff we don't need to go into detail anymore but the main takeaway is you can see with the op amp as a middleman right here it does a whole lot better getting the voltage that you set at the trim pot than trying to power something with the trim pot by itself so if it's a very very low demand in fact this is pretty low demand here you could get away with just powering directly from a, a trim pot but uh, as a load has more demand for a given trim pot if we needed a high demand load with these voltages we would need a high value uh, trim pot in relationship to that it would be thrown way off so it's much easier just to feed the voltage in this case to an op amp and have it give us the same voltage out but be able to provide more power so in any case hopefully that all made sense and uh, this is a much more in-depth topic but I was mostly focused on the demonstrations for this video and so study up on this topic more but hopefully this still made sense and you uh, understand the circuit anyways also before we go I do have the uh, pin layout for the uh, 741 op amp right here and uh, a lot of other op amps have the same pin layout but uh, a lot of them have different ones and so you can see we got the uh, positive voltage from the uh, power supply right there pin number seven second pin down on the right we have the output right below it then we come across here we have the non inverting input straight across from the output so pin number three there we got the blue jumper inverting input right above it so we have our feedback right there direct feedback from out there and then we have our negative power supply right there that's offset no but that's uh, not related to this video at all and I never do that uh, so I don't have an experience with that this is also offset no I abbreviated it to save space and non not connected up there so pretty straightforward so hope you enjoy the video thanks for watching I'll see you in the next video